Welcome to Uncle Buck's Garage. Well, you know, shakedown runs and shakedown runs and driving around and working out all the kinks and find out where the problem is. It's part of putting an old hot rod together. But today I had my problem. I was, drove it probably 50 miles today. Bank, chiropractor, all around town. You know, up, down, warm, cold, warm, cold, all morning, all afternoon, right? Well, I'm driving home. And I get within three quarters of a mile of the house, and it just dies. Won't start, won't hit, just dead. So today, I'm going to show you how to pull a Dr. Underhood and find out how to figure out what's wrong with your hot rod. Okay, so the first thing is, is that the battery's fine. Turns over, turns over, turns over, you know, no broken motor parts, nothing like that. The carburetor is leaking a little bit, so it needs to be tightened. It needs to be addressed a little bit because it had a couple of drips on it, but it's just not hidden. It just, it just, it just stopped key on, just blah, 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 dead. Uh, then it turns over and the battery is fine. So what does it got to be? It's got to be fire. So... Let's go under that premise and let's check some stuff out under the hood or that blow fuse or did I, the power lead to the distributor just come off. So let's start the process. First things first, check all the connections. Okay. Now I've had weird things happen than this. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to give it a little gas. See if it starts since it wouldn't start when it's hot. Let's see if it starts when it's cold. Okay. Now, this doesn't make any sense. Unless, unless we're not dealing with the ignition problem, unless we're dealing with a carburetor problem. But I was on a incline whenever I stopped. It was going downhill, and it just, maybe we need to check the bowls in the carburetor. Maybe it just got starved. Maybe it got flooded, lack of fuel. Don't know, but that doesn't make any sense, because it, up. Okay. Okay. So, what would make that do that? It didn't automatically, that's exactly what it did last night. And there's no fuel. Now, it says there's a half tank of gas in it. But she's dry as a bone. Okay. So, lesson learned. While you're here and you're watching, check out UncleBuckStuff.com. Check out a hat, a t-shirt. As you can see, I got the new design on, Uncle Buckweiser. Uh, I got them all the way up to 4X. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Smash that button. Hit that bell. Tell your friends. Y'all have a good day. Lesson learned. Okay. So, now I know the ohms is wrong on my sending unit for my in my gas tank. So I'm out of gas. Ran myself out of gas. So there's another problem. So, but the whole trick to all this is just going through the checklist. When you when you're it's running and it's doing good and you're not having any problems and everything is smooth and all of a sudden something creeps up, you go step by step by step. And, yeah, so it was on an incline at the stoplight, which means the gas would have sloshed in the back of the deal, and it would have basically run out of gas. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So let's put some gas in it and see what happens. Okay, I put about three gallons of gas in a bare minute, so let's see what happens. <sighs> Okay. <laughs> 
the carburetor is empty or not. Clean out a little bit, about 1300 RPMs. She's idling a little low, so we'll give her a little. Well, that ain't quite right. Okay, the fuel is flowing. There she goes, and there she goes. She's trying to quit. I'm going to have to make a speculation that that carburetor's got junk in it. Sat long enough that there's junk in the bowl. I don't have a vacuum leak. I was leaking some fuel, but whoop, whoop, yep, she was a little bit loose. Uh, oh, that was tight. Okay. Yes. It could have sucked up some garbage from the bottom of that tank, which that tank is brand new, or some residual from inside the line. I think the float was just a little greasy. So we'll put a second can of B12 in. In that three gallons and run it down and just make sure we're flogging the shit out of this thing. But it's not an ignition problem. It's a carburetor problem. I ran out of gas and I might have collected up some garbage in the bowl. Freed some garbage up that was in the bowl because this carburetor is something that came on a parts truck. Okay, and the whole thing I did is you just get her loose. I need a rag. Because we might spill some gas. Okay, and how this is supposed to work. Okay, so the old adage is if you bounce it, you should get some fuel, which we're not. Okay, so we're gonna loosen this off, which is gonna, it's gonna do what it's gonna do. It's gonna, this is just your tightening bolt, right? This. There we go. Now we got fuel coming out. We gotta stop this up. Now, watch. 
See that's coming out? Now we're pretty close. It might be a little bit heavy, but going down the drag strip, a little bit heavy is okay. So the float was actually set low. And this just screws back in. Just stop it up. All right, and then we actually could take this and back this off just a hair. Just like that, just to make it happy. Tighten that down. Tighten that down. That's it. That's how you set a bowl. But okay, so and this had set for a long time, and these bowl screws were a little bit loose. But she's pretty like it, so she's not dying anymore. We're full of fuel. I'm gonna run a little bit more longer and let that I'll put the second can of Berryman in. But it completely it completely uh, threw me for a loop. I really thought I had an ignition problem when it turned out that the float level on the carburetor was low and I ran out of gas. And then I, that when you run them out of gas, you end up moving junk around. So you saw me give it the taps and get that seat set where it's supposed to be. And always put use a always 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 use a rag. Don't ever just let it raw gas just seep onto the manifold. Um, I'm just gonna let this run and let this second can percolate. Then we're gonna go down to the gas station get some gas. So this is how you diagnose a problem on the side of the road or pull it home for three quarters of a mile and then diagnose it uh, in the afternoon to find out what just happened to your hot rod. Which I found out two things that the float need to be set. The gas gauge is not correct. So I know once I get past a half a tank, which I thought I had a little less than half a tank, then I'm out of gas. And um, if when you run out of gas, you're gonna, old junk is gonna uh, show up to try to clog things up that you're gonna need to put some kind of fuel in. And, and I, everybody loves sea foam. I'm not a big fan of sea foam. Sea foam is an uh, oil treatment. It's not a gas treatment. Berryman, that's a gas treatment. So if you're still here, like, share, and subscribe. Smash that button, hit that bell. Tell your friends. Check out UncleBuckStuff.com. Check out the new t-shirts. Uncle Buckweiser, they're really cool. I love them. Y'all have a great day. It's a great day today. It's going to mean a fixed carburetor in the morning. Y'all be good.